Look at that. Do you see that? I do. It's that magic. Looks like you're... Whoa. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for the... <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid rags. It's I'm tripping balls, and you can follow us on Instagram. <laughs> I'm wait, hold on. Where am I? Uh, welcome back to our stupid rags. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Rick, and I'm Ashley. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter from all juicy content. It's so juicy. Thank you for us on Patreon. Follow the official Twitter account. Ring the bell. We're part of the notification squad. Bang! And today, in um. We're on a Irfan Khan uh, marathon. So it's true. We told you that's what was going to happen. Uh, but yeah. we finally, well, I finally watched, they, they saw it when it came out. I finally watched uh, Life of Pi uh, with uh, Irfan Khan and directed by um, Ang Lee. Um, so uh, obviously this is going to be a spoiler review. The film came out a long time ago. Yeah, watch. and if you haven't seen it, just stop, go watch, come back. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, star, uh, Ang Lee, who I'm, I'm a hu- I was a huge fan of already um, because of uh, Brokeback Mountain. He, if you haven't seen that film, what he does uh, with I that film watched. and how he, how, how he works, um, from what I've heard, is very, he doesn't give a lot of um, direction. He's one of those. Mm. He's one of those directors. He's one of those. <laughs> it's pretty extraordinary, just in the comparison of those two films. They're both brilliant, but so extraordinarily different. You would think it's actually two different directors. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like <laughs> this is almost like um, Avatar Light. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. As, ter- as far as visuals are concerned, yeah, that's in, a good. Ter- in terms of visuals. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, so yeah, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. So, um, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to let y'all know, I liked it. Uh, I do wish, uh, hold on. Okay, cool. Uh, I froze for a second. I do wish Irfan Khan was in it more. Uh, I, I was missing that. Um, yeah. but I, I, I want to talk about his performance right now, um, because it was so, so different. Um, from everything else. And obviously I'd seen bits and pieces of his scenes because it's, it's a pretty famous, especially with um, him passing, that one scene of him saying, uh, never saying goodbye has been going around, you know, all over the place. So I had seen that before uh, and, and uh, some other visuals from it. But his character is so different than his normal characters, um, which is another thing I'm loving. Um, the more we're exploring Irfan Khan, um, because at the beginning we saw him in, uh, what is it? Piku. And obviously we knew him from Hollywood a little bit. Um, but we, we saw him in Piku and then we saw him in, um, as the ghost and we saw him in, in a couple of those roles. The cu- past couple roles have been very different. And this is not a role like the one that we just saw Pan Singh, uh, where he's obviously playing almost a villain type thing. Um, He's playing a pretty straight man, but he almost didn't look like Irfan here. Uh, yeah. that, that's what it felt like to me. It didn't, it felt like, I, I know he was much, much younger than this, but this felt like old, like an uh, old 60s, 65 year old Irfan <laughs> Khan almost. <laughs> Even though he didn't, he didn't look like that, but he felt like, uh, like almost like an Amatak Bakchan character. At times. Mm-hmm. That's what it felt like yeah. to me. Which uh, is very different than what uh, uh, I'm normally used to from him, and I loved it. Obviously, he was so good and so flawless, um, and um, I was cherishing every moment uh, I saw him on screen. Um, but yeah, especially because there's not a lot. He's in it, and it's like a, he's a big part of it, but he's not seen very much. <laughs> yeah, since it's one of those ones that obviously he's playing the older character that's telling this story. Uh, he's basically like the Rose from Titanic, except not basically. 95 years old. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
Like, this can't just be me reviewing this. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and listen. Well, you, everybody hears from me. What are, what are your thoughts? I mean, you, you, we saw it multiple times. When it when it came out, we loved it. And I think we saw it like three or four times so. um, when it first came out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, But this was your first time seeing it since we saw it in theaters, yeah? Well, maybe maybe I, second know, time. I don't know. Maybe it second. It's been time, years. Though. It's been years since we've seen, you've seen like, it. Like, I didn't watch it last week, if that's what you're asking. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I did not watched it today um but i love it i love all the visuals of it mm. i think it's so pretty oh my goodness and i think um just because there's so much time spent on the boat mm. there's so much that i don't think a lot of movies show about just like the ocean it was almost like you're watching a nature video you know yeah. on national geographic or something where it's like this is what can happen when you're on the ocean mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah the visuals were beautiful a lot of that stuff was not how animals act in the ocean but uh, <laughs> uh animals don't just swim at the top of the ocean like that uh in the, can in the in the well the whales yeah uh but just the regular fish that are just there, the mahi-mahi, there's birds. Those are prey. They don't just sit on the top of the water like that. <laughs> and I know, obviously I know what he was doing. Obviously this is a guy telling a story, so the, the writer yeah. himself is visualizing what's happening. And so he's creating a grander picture, obviously. Um, right. Uh, yeah. So I knew that's what was going on. Uh, but yeah, the visuals were... Um, so so beautiful uh with all the uh illuminescence of the water um yeah i love that oh my gosh i Ooh, loved how you. sometimes he made the pacific ocean look like it was a pond uh, i know mm -hmm. <laughs> i was like the pacific ocean is never that calm okay just letting you know <laughs> like where in the pacific ocean are you <laughs> uh, but yeah the uh, uh love the, the visuals uh the the main actor i thought was good i didn't love him all the time um, uh, not my favorite, but he wasn't bad. Uh, he was, he was fine. He, he did fine, but I was much more looking forward to Irfan, uh, playing mm -hmm. that character than I was him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I like watching but, the tiger, which was completely not real. Yeah. <laughs> well, what story do you think was real? Oh, I mean, obviously the, the one with, with the, the tiger. tiger. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Right. Of course. Obviously. Why would you even think about anything else? Yeah, because that yeah, makes so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they owned a zoo. I was <laughs> just, well, the thing that told me it was dumb is right at the beginning when the orangutan was floating in, right? Um, not that the <laughs> bananas don't float. He didn't take any bananas. Didn't we do that? We did. Every, everybody did. Was. Everybody did. did when that float? movie came out, took bananas and, threw them, to make them them, and threw them in pools to see if they would float or not. They do float. Yeah, bananas do yeah. float. Yeah, bananas float, but that's yeah. not what I'm saying. It's he, no, I know. He was in a raft, and he knew he didn't have anywhere to go, and there was a twenty bundles of bananas, and he didn't take any of them. Who the orangutan? <laughs> no, him. Oh, he's a, He was an idiot. <laughs> I don't understand. It's the bananas. <laughs> that's that's the stuff that bothers me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the um, the I thought the the score was really subtle, um, and, and so I like that a lot. I like Ang Lee a lot. I've always been an admirer of his work because he's so so different uh, in how he he directs movies and his own style. He doesn't really go with the flow. Oh, of what's her, popular yeah. when, in movies? Mm -hmm. He doesn't do anything to make money. He made a gay cowboy mm -hmm. movie. I mean, come on, like how. <laughs> How how non marketable is that to pitch during that time? It it wasn't a marketable movie, and then yeah, we got this great idea. And then he took two actors who weren't really in there. Nobody thought that they could do Oscar level performances at that time. Uh, in Jake Gyllenhaal and and Heath Ledger, and just trusted them. And but he he also uh, I don't know if you saw any behind the scenes of Brokeback Mountain. He all he was. All the notes he ever gave was just, he told Heath Ledger, just <laughs> smaller. Just calm it down, <laughs> that, And that's the only note he ever gave. He, he didn't, he, he was never like, like, he was like, cut. 
he didn't come over to give notes, and then he just asked if you were ready again, and then only ever he would come over and say, smaller. And so I'm assuming that's the exact time. That's probably why he loved earphone. Uh, I mean, yeah. no one's as small as One tier, earphone. only one tier. Um, yeah, he, he did so brilliant in that, in that one scene, um, that, the one where he was saying uh, to say goodbye. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't think I like the white guy, and I know this is a Hollywood film, and I didn't even like the white guy in it. Um, Where have I seen that guy before? I don't know. I think in like TV. Or I don't know. I'm sure that it was something like that, <laughs> considering yeah. he's an actor. He wasn't as bad as some of the white people in Bollywood, but I didn't. I wasn't blown. I, I, was, I, I wasn't blown away like by anybody's performance except for Irfan in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I guess it's not that type of film. You're more going for the visuals, I guess. And, yeah, the visuals and, and the story. And, and the cool story. And so obviously mm-hmm. there wasn't really any, except for Irfan's older character, there wasn't room for anybody to shine, I guess. Um, yeah. But I, I did really enjoy the film. Um, I thought it was really, really pretty. And he, he, definitely, so he definitely murdered some people, which was cool. Uh, <laughs> no, what are you talking so about? So you, you, prefer, you prefer the story without the tiger. Oh, he 100 percent murdered him. I was fa- I was trying to the whole time. I was like, so what's the real story here? This is not believable. Uh, see, no, <laughs> that's not given. How old was I when this came out? So I was like, this is imagination. Oh and I yeah. Was so excited. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. If you believe you can live on a boat with a tiger, you're an idiot. That's oh no. Then, I'm, then, then I am a full blown, full fledged idiot. I've been telling I you think- that for years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's no, just, I think it could happen. I could train a tiger. No. Sure. <laughs> no. The, the thing that made sense was the hyena. That made sense. Uh, hyena killing everybody uh, because he's a hyena. But then the uh, tiger. But he, he did. Uh, he, I don't know what. I think I because I, I was trying to figure out uh, Ang Lee's message in it and. And about religion and, and mm-hmm. worldview and all that. And um, I think it was mostly summed up in the end by Irfan. He said, same as with God in terms of mm-hmm. the fake story with the tiger. He said, mm-hmm. that's the one that I like to believe more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so um, both, I think, uh, so I was trying to figure out what exactly he was saying because he's a Hindu Christian um Muslim Buddhist. Muslim Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> Jew. Um, and so he was obviously saying something about all the religions um, and, and, and God as a whole. And so, mm-hmm. um, but obviously he wasn't being preachy about it and he wasn't saying exactly what he believed. He left it open to the audience for their interpretation of what you think this means mm-hmm. about religion, God, and, and, and all that. Um, and so I thought that was a really beautiful thing he did with the film. I agree with you. How did you feel? How did you feel looking at it in 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 light of the experience we've had over the past better part of a year now, and seeing representation of Indian culture and taboo and uh, a couple of people whose faces we recognize because now we've seen them in in motion pictures there, and even something like she's talking at the dinner table and she said, "Well, he has his beliefs, and you have your cricket." Um, uh, but it, uh, was it just like kind of yeah I'm used to seeing this now or was it interesting to you that this was all that this had that much in it it was nice um, yeah that it was kind of almost normal um, obviously I'm seeing it very different so it did sometimes feel like an Indian film but it also sometimes felt like a Hollywood film in the mm-hmm. terms of but it also could have been the visuals he was going for everything was mm-hmm. um like when he was in India, it it looked like India, but it didn't feel like India. Uh, when like when they were out on the streets, uh, at certain points. Uh, but I think that was once again the storytelling thing of I think it was like did, the, the writer's head. Yeah, I did. I did too. I also felt like it may have been intentional. It was almost like um, not that he meant to do this himself, but it it for me in many respects, as far as the representation, it's the anti slum dog. Yeah. Um, it, it, it depicts 
it depicts India and Indians in ways that they're typically not portrayed here in America. All the stereotypes are there's there are no stereotypes in, in this. In fact, when it is brought up, it's Gerard Depardieu's character, the cook, calling them curry eaters, which understandably causes the dad to flip out and want to kick his ass. Yeah. Um, I I just in retrospect, looking back at it, I've been amazed when when the movie came out, it it deeply touched me. I had adored this movie when it came out and uh, there's just been this through line throughout my life that i look back on like oh wow i didn't there's india there's india hey i forgot there's india hey, yeah. About India. <laughs> yeah and and um uh, as far as as far as irfan you know we have been playing that clip a lot and everyone's been playing that clip about the goodbyes mm -hmm. there was something even more profound for me uh in that same speech but it's at the very end Mm. where he gets to that place where he says to him, which of the two stories do you prefer? And he says, I prefer the one with the tiger. And then he says, Pi says his wife has arrived. And he says, your wife? He says, yes, I have a wife and I have two children. And a cat. Don't and, a, a cat. and a cat. And the reporter smiles and says to him, so your story does have a happy ending. And Irfan says this, that's up to you. It's yours now. And I thought, how fitting is that in terms of what we've been saying in the past couple of days about his legacy and our remembering of him and how we've been choosing to celebrate and, and focus on the joy he's brought us and he's left behind for the world to see versus the, the, uh, the sadness that we understandably feel. And it was almost as if he was saying, um, you know, the reporter saying, so your Irfan, your story this was very sad, and we've only been thinking about it in terms of how sad it is that you're gone. But is can we somehow see your story as having a happy ending? And he looks at you and says, yeah, that's up to you. My story is yours now. I'm not here to tell my story anymore, guys. Mm -hmm. My story has to be told by you. Anybody who hears about me from now on, it's up to you to preach the gospel of your fond con. <laughs> preach the gospel of your fond con. I like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would like to go to that island, though. Same. I googled it. It's not real. It. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. No. A, a, a man-eating <laughs> island. You were wondering. I, <laughs> well, it I, is. It is real on a certain level of metaphysics. Oh well, yes. But if we're gonna get metaphysical, this is gonna be a much longer conversation. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> but I actually thought it was gonna be like plants growing on the trash island, basically. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> are they gonna? Get, are they gonna get like a? Clean up the clean up the planet uh, with this um, because there's a lot of trash. <laughs> you you also said trash. something that that I agree with you. You said you you jokingly said you know Avatar Light, and I I actually I prefer in the same way that I prefer small makeup effects. I prefer smaller visual effects. Not to say that <laughs> this was that small because there were some massive visual effects in this, but like comparing it to Avatar. Um, Avatar is nothing but a visual effects spectacle, every frame of film, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And what um, I, I just marvel at not just the beauty, uh, the beauty of it, but how how that tiger is not real. That that tiger is is a CGI creation, and it's just a flawless CGI creation, as is everything else visually in in the film. And it reminded me as well as, you know, we're watching it on the screen. I'm really happy we can watch movies on TVs and stuff that's made straight for streaming. But the two aspects of a movie experience in a theater that are irreplaceable are the common experience of everyone together mm -hmm. sharing that experience, the laughter, the crying, and you're doing it as a collective uh, humanity. But like a film like this, the immersion. You yeah. cannot... <laughs> You don't get immersed in Life of Pi. It would. This film was made for the big screen for you to get utterly lost in these visuals. Yeah. It, it it does lose its majesty when it's lowered to a small screen. Unless yeah. you have a home theater. Yeah, unless you had a massive home theater. <gasps> One day. One day. One day. Uh, One day. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, Irfan was beautiful, wasn't he, as usual? Yeah, he, he was one yeah. Of the, it was a fantastic performance and a very, like I said, it, felt, it didn't almost feel like Irfan um, in terms of it didn't look like him. Uh, especially for yeah. uh, knowing how young he was during this, uh, mm -hmm. it, didn't, yeah. it didn't feel like him. Uh, he looks so, so different than uh, what 
uh, his other roles, which is a testament to, I guess, him and the makeup, uh, because I think they did something with his face. Or maybe it was just his hair, and he didn't have a beard, and that that's that was enough. I don't know. Yeah, and he looked, and he looked, and he looked younger. And in all honesty, for the past couple of years, when we have seen him in some things, um, it's been post not not feeling well. Yeah. Next so, um, but yeah, it was it was it was um, bittersweet to watch him in that today. Yeah, I was uh, I was cherishing every moment. Uh, yeah, watching it, um, but. Yeah, so I finally watched it. You're welcome, guys. Uh, yay for Corbin. It's only how, how, how yay long? For Corbin. How long's it been out? Um, uh, I, I think I'm gonna guess that Life of Pi came out sometime in 2014. Hold up, hold up. That's my guess. 2014. Let's see. 2012. Oh, I was close. <laughs> 2012. Pan Singh. Uh, was that same year? Yeah. Why? Yep. I wonder how many films he. That was a freaking great year. There's a lot of great <laughs> movies that came out in 2012. Yeah. Dang. Anyway. Well, let us know what other earphone cons we should watch next, because uh, we will watch them all. Namesake. <clears throat> Namesake. <clears throat> I don't. I haven't checked to see if it's available anywhere. So. <laughs> Namesake. I once again still haven't checked if it's anywhere. So. <laughs> so stop coughing, coronavirus. Yes. Our stupid reactions. Tune in for...